بعكس ما تروج له بعض القنوات دخل الجيش السوري إلى هذه المنطقة The Syrian army didn't wait long after advancing in the rural areas of West Al Qusayr and recapturing several towns and villages to the south of the Orontes River. Its units launched a comprehensive military operation in order to liberate a number of the towns to the east of the Orontes River and complete the siege of Al Qusayr. The military's decision was clear to surround the eastern towns of Al Boida and Al Thaba and prevent the armed groups from pressuring the Syrian army due to Al Qusayr's strategic geographical location. The army also intended to tighten the grip on the city itself and secure the international road from homes to the Syrian coast and other areas. When the operation started, the Syrian army moved towards the town of al -Kmam. Snipers stationed outside the town and its roads considerably slowed down the army's progress. Eventually, after the unit divided into two, it managed to surprise the armed groups with its maneuvering capabilities. The clashes lasted for hours before the Syrian units managed to enter al -Kmam. As soon as the army entered the town, the engineering unit started dismantling various bombs planted between the houses by the armed groups in order to impede the army's advancement. The army continued to strengthen its position inside the town prior to its attack on al Salomia, town situated near Alkma. The army's surprise tactic and highly trained guerrilla fighters were decisive elements in the battle. By lifting the siege on the town of al Ghassania, the goal of the operation was accomplished. For more than a year before the siege was broken, al Ghassania residents had not been able to cross Katinat Lake. The army's second target was al Shomaria town, which was considered the last joint in surrounding al Ghassania on Katina Lake, from where the armed groups traveled by boats to deliver arms and logistic support to their comrades in other villages. To prevent the arrival of any supplies to the armed groups stationed in al Shumaria town, one unit of the Syrian army advanced towards al Shumaria, while the army engaged with the armed groups in al Thaba, eastern al Buayda, al Rujun, and al Hamidiyya. At the same time, an engineering unit was busy dismantling bombs planted outside the town and around civilian houses, while simultaneously a highly trained guerrilla group entered the town to start combing the entire area. With the entry of the Syrian army, the siege of al Ghassania came to an end. Now the armed groups in the towns of al Haydaria, Aish al-Warwar, Western al Mayna, Eastern al Buayda, and al Thaba had no choice but to surrender to the quick advancement of the Syrian army. The army soon began combing al Haydaria, Aish al-Warwar, and Western al Mayna in severe clashes at the entrance of eastern al Buayda and al Thaba towns broke out. To control the three towns of western al Mayna, al Haydaria, and Aish al Warwar is considered as a strategic move by the Syrian army because it cuts off the road between homes and al Qusayr and prevents any logistic supplies from reaching the armed groups. Inside al Qusayr, which has been cut off from its geographical surroundings, surveillance units work continuously. The battle started by the army's gradual advancement towards al Qusayr's rural areas and by applying the nibble and isolation strategy village after village and town after town until al Qusayr city was separated from its rural areas.
At the dawn of Sunday, 19th of May, 2013, Syria witnessed an entirely different battle. Al Qusayr battle, which could be considered as the most strategic battle, raged 15 kilometers northeast of the Lebanese borders and 35 kilometers to the south of Homs. The major assault against Al Qusayr city was launched after the Syrian army managed to infiltrate wireless system networks of the armed groups, which enabled the army to pinpoint their locations. The area was divided into two, while the army in fact divided the battle area into six sections in order to separate the armed groups from each other and weaken their morale. The first strike at the break of dawn took the armed groups by surprise. The element of shock allowed the Syrian army to advance from three directions, from the east, south and northeast to target the armed groups headquarters. Simultaneously some units replaced the troops that had entered from the southern direction, from the east Syrian troops moved through Zamrun plains towards Al Qusayr city. Once again, they took advantage of the surprise element, which enabled them to recapture the school complex and the eastern quarter in record time. هذه منطقة تجمع المدارس التي كانت تتواجد فيها المجموعات المسلحة والتي كانت تتمركز هنا الآن أصبحت كليا تحت سيطرة الجيش السوري كما نتابع والعملية الآن تستكمل بهذا الاتجاه. The streets and the main square in the city portray very well the battle that had raged a couple of hours ago. كما نتابع الآن نحن داخل مدينة القصير هذا مسجد الإمام علي وهذا الشارع تتواجد فيه المجموعات المسلحة وهذا الساتر كما تتابعون نحن الآن في قلب مدينة القصير التي كانت تتحصن فيها المجموعات المسلحة في هذه المنطقة وقام الجيش السوري بتنظيف كل هذا الدوار وهو معروف بداخل مدينة القصير We proceed towards the front line where clashes are still going on and sniper operations are the most noticeable features. كما نتابع الآن هذه الاشتباكات هنا هنا تدور الاشتباكات الآن الجيش السوري يواجه المجموعات المسلحة في هذه المنطقة. This is the area where the school complex is located. Armed groups have been removed from this area and other strategic locations in the city. The army's advancement from the south was very smooth. Only specific locations were targeted due to their accurate intelligence information. The current state of the streets and alleys here reflect the extent of the clashes. Armed groups fortified inside these houses after they planted dozens of bombs in a bit to impede the army's advancement. From where I'm sending this report, shelling and sniper and artillery attacks are still dominating the atmosphere in the city. The use of artillery contributed greatly to minimizing casualties among Syrian soldiers. On the other hand, heavy deployment of snipers in many areas of Al Qusayr prompted the Syrian army to implement a totally different tactic in which special units encircled the armed groups after the advancement of other units in order to create distraction from the intended operation. The army clashed with the armed groups from close range 
and from one street to another. When the armed groups realized that they had lost the initiative and were being chased by the Syrian army, they resorted to using bombs as the sole weapon at their disposal in order to slow down the advancement of the army. Those bombs were planted so as to create a domino effect where the explosion of one bomb would lead to the explosion of the rest. الآن في هذه المنطقة من هذه الناحية الحي الغربي من هذه الناحية الحي الغربي ما زالت كذلك هناك اشتباكات كما نتابع وعمليات الانتشار التي يقوم بها الجيش السوري في هذه المنطقة. After the army managed to take full control of the southern quarter of the city, its units advanced towards the city's central area. What is clear from the wreckage left behind is the intensity of the battles in this area. The main street of the city, called Holmes, Baalbek Street, was combed quickly after the snipers deliberately cut it off. This is the Al Ahli Hospital, which was under the control of the armed forces. كما نتابع الآن نحن في قلب مدينة القصير هذه المستشفى القصير الأهلي هذه المنطقة معروفة كانت تتحصن فيها المجموعات المسلحة وقد حولوا هذا المشفى إلى مشفى ميداني وكما نتابع الآن هذه المنطقة وهذا الطريق الذي يعتبر الطريق الرئيس في هذه المنطقة وهو طريق حمص بعلبك The aim was to surround the armed groups and cut off all supply routes inside and outside the city. This is what the Syrian army managed to achieve through controlling Al Hamidiya village. Bombs planted by the armed groups in this tunnel are good examples of trenches erected by them in these quarters. The military uniforms suggest the presence of Al Nusra Front and the sectarian books are from Qatar. The Syrian army announces that the first phase of the operation is successfully coming to an end according to plan. Now the armed groups are surrounded in a narrow triangle from the northern side, where Al Hamidiya village is located, close to Al Daba Air Base, in which the Syrian army units are present. The Syrian army briskly launched a second phase of attacks. The target this time is to recapture the towns of Arjun and Niprak in Al Qasair's rural areas. The liberation of Al Dabab Air Base, which was considered the armed group's backyard in Al Qasair, was a real surprise for everybody. In this operation, the Syrian army surrounded the armed groups in the northern part of the city before it could manage to reach the strategic air base while its other units took over the nearby Al Hamidiya village. The commander of the operation employed a new strategy of tense firing in order to distract the armed groups after he deluded them that the major battle is concentrated in the northern quarter of Al Qusayr city. He concentrated his unit's fire towards the northern part of the city which pushed the armed groups to retreat to the western part of the city, which was experiencing fierce close-range fighting. As a result, the armed groups focused their efforts on the western part of the city, which allowed the army to advance through the northern road directly towards the strategic Al Daba Air Base. Al Daba Air Base is considered the most strategic location in Homs province. Due to its proximity to Al Qusayr city and its central position among Al Hamidiya, Arjun, Al Thaba, Al Masudiya, and eastern Al Buayda towns. When the army took control of Al Daba Air Base, the armed groups lost their only lifeline. Battles were still raging fiercely and the armed groups were shocked by the developments on the ground. Finally, the armed groups retreated to Al Thaba village in the western rural area of Al Qusayr, leaving behind their dead and injured companions.
the Syrian army resumed its military operation from the southern quarter. The goal was to take control of the western and southwestern quarters in order to reach the center of al Ghosair and create a new confrontation line with the armed groups at the heart of the northern quarter of the city as a prelude operation to combing the northern quarter. The Syrian army advanced to the western and southwestern quarters, which resulted in fierce fighting with an Nusra Front fighters. The army finally reached the center of al Ghosair city and took control of the municipality building. By now, most parts of the city were at the hands of the Syrian army. The determination and the progress on the ground created an aperture for the soldiers to enter and dominate the center of al Ghosair city. al Ghosair was the strategic bastion for an Nusra front fighters and the front line in defending the northern quarter. With their defeat, the armed group's morale started to decline sharply and they became more hysterical while a total collapse could be seen among them after the arrival of the Syrian army to areas which exposed their weakness and vulnerability. In the evening, the military command decided it was the right time to storm the northern quarter of the city. At nightfall, the Syrian army entered the northern quarter from three different directions, from the east, west and north. By dawn, heavy fire forced the An Nusra fighters to flee towards al Faba which allowed the Syrian units to enter the northern quarter and begin the combing operation. When the dust settled in al Ghosair city, the extent of the destruction caused by the armed groups became visible. Even the sacredness of this historic church did not spare it from the armed groups' destruction and looting. هذه هي الكنيسة كما تتابعين خلفي يعني الكنيسة هذه هذه المنطقة حيث كان قامت المجموعات المسلحة بطرد الأهالي الذين كانوا يعيشون في هذه الأحياء. The armed groups' trenches and facilities indicate the nature of the support they have been receiving. This is the field hospital in Al Ghosair city. It has surgery rooms, modern appliances, and a huge quantity of medicine. Contrary to the armed group's allegations of shortages in medicines and medical instruments. هذا المستشفى الميداني الذي كانت تستخدمه المجموعات المسلحة هنا لمعالجة الجرحى أثار الدماء ما زالت موجودة البذات العسكرية ما زالت موجودة هنا كانت تجرى العديد من العمليات لمعالجة المجموعات المسلحة وبالتحديد الذين سقطوا خلال المعركة الأخيرة قبل أن تتم عملية تنظيف. While the Syrian army was chasing the remaining members of the defeated armed groups out of the city, some residents began to return to their homes. There was a feeling of triumph over the victory achieved by the Syrian army and a resolve among the citizens to reconstruct their city. The Syrian army continued towards Al Masudiyah village and later Al Salhia village which were liberated without any resistance from the armed groups who had fled to eastern al Buwaida, leaving behind all their weapons and ammunition. Here, the Syrian army confiscated arms and various vehicles equipped with heavy machine guns and missile launchers in addition to large quantities of ammunition and mortar shells. In a swift maneuver by competent army units, eastern al Buwaida was surrounded. The Syrian army entered the town to comb the area and discovered that the armed groups had deliberately planted bombs inside houses prior to fleeing. Field hospitals can be seen everywhere, and as usual, tunnels are the armed group's favorite method of trench. One of the tunnels was dug underneath the field hospital, consisting two rooms used as shelters in order to avoid the army's strikes. Other tunnels were used as arms depots.
Now, Alguacer City and its rural areas are under total Syrian army control. Due to the strategic location of al Ghosair, situated between the North Lebanese towns of Ersal and Hormel, and the Homs Damascus motorway to the Syrian coastline, the armed groups had put their military weight in this area and recruited fighters from Chechnya, Afghanistan, and Arab and other foreign countries. And this particular factor became their fatal mistake. The recent victory in al Ghosair and the surprises the army had for the armed groups are certainly not the last ones. Various military operations on different fronts will further weaken the armed groups and will drive them closer to total collapse. <laughs>